All right, so we're finally gonna move on from the negative exponent problems and we're gonna do rational expressions, but this time they're gonna have roots of some kind, whether it be a square root, a cubed root, a fourth root, a root of some kind. So before we jump into um, some examples of what these look like and how we do them, I wanna just go back and recall a few things from your math two, math three days. The first thing I want us to recall is that x plus y squared is not the same as x squared plus y squared. That's a mistake that some people will commonly make. Um, that's actually not equal. Remember if it's squared you have to write it out twice and then multiply it together. We can't distribute it. Um, another one that I want you to recall is if we were do, to do the square root of x squared plus y squared, it again does not equal x plus y. Our properties that allow us to either distribute the squared or the square root or to break apart the square root all deal with multiplication. So addition negates those properties. We can't do it. So please don't make this mistake. Okay, so now to some things that we can do. The square root of x times the square root of x. Remember, that's just equal to x. The square roots will negate each other, leaving us with just what's inside. Uh, we also have the square root. Now if it's x plus y in parentheses squared, that's when the square root can cancel. So this would be x plus y. Not okay? Yes okay. Um, let's see, another one. x squared times y squared in a square root, that will equal xy. Multiplication is okay, addition not okay. And let's see, the last thing I wanted us to recall was the square root of 5 and how we write that as a fractional exponent to the 1 half. These are some of the properties that, oft, that we often use or don't use um, for the ones that don't actually equal. Um, so you want to just be aware of what you can and can't do in terms of squaring and square rooting because um, those are all going to be things that, that appear and I want to make sure we're all on the same page. Not doable, don't do it. Yes, those are okay. So when we go into our examples, so here's our first one, 4a squared over the square root of a squared plus 1, all inside the square root, plus the square root of a squared plus 1. Okay, so these are rational expressions, meaning we still are going to look for a least common denominator, and depending on if we're just adding two fractions, or if we have a complex, what we do with that least common denominator will differ. So with this one, the first thing I'm going to do is put this over 1. So I have a rational expression being added to a rational expression. So when I go to find my least common denominator, it's just going to be the one that's here, the square root of a squared plus 1. Now because this is not complex, I'm just adding two fractions together, I need to get each fraction to have the common denominator so that I can add them together. So uh, this first one already has our common denominator, so I can just copy it down. Move this up a bit. Now the second term, I have to multiply top and bottom by the LCD so that I can have a denominator of a squared plus 1 inside of a square root. 
Now when I do this, square root of a squared plus one times the square root of a squared plus one, that's this property right here that allows us to drop the square root because the square roots negate each other and we have just a squared plus one. Now that we have a common denominator, I can go ahead and add my numerators. So 4a squared plus a squared is 5a squared, and then plus 1. That would be our final solution. So our process is the same as what we did back in 1.4, I believe, and even, or sorry, 1.5, when we first started rational expressions. No, I was right the first time, 1.4, um, where we're adding them, so we have to get a common denominator. Okay, so let's try another one to see how this one goes. So our second example is similar to the first. x divided by the square root of 2 plus x plus 2 plus x to the 1 half. So how this one differs from the first one that we did, the first one, everything was already in square roots. On the second one, we have a square root and we have a fractional exponent. So what you'll want to do um, before you get too far into it is change things all to the same format. So either change the fractional exponent to a square root or the square root to a fractional exponent. Either one you want to do is fine. Sometimes one will be easier than the other. Um, moving into exponents tends to usually be the easier way to go, but it, a lot of times it really doesn't matter. So um, I'm going to put this over 1, and I'm going to take this denominator and rewrite it as 2x, two, 2 plus x to the 1 half, just so I have everything in exponential. So these are the same thing, I'm just rewriting it so my formats are all the same. So then I'm going to look for my denominators. My common denominator is 2 plus x to the 1 half. So again, because I have two fractions being added together, I need a common denominator between the two fractions so that I can actually add them. My first fraction already has the common denominator, so I can just copy it down. My second one I need to multiply top and bottom by 2 plus x to the 1 half. So on the bottom, I'm going to have 2 plus x to the 1 half. And now on top, using our exponent rules, what's 1 half plus 1 half? Well, it's just 1, so we get 2 plus x. So it, whether it's in radical form and you're using this property up here, to cancel out the square roots, or you leave it in exponent form and you use your exponent properties where you add the exponents together to get one, you're still gonna end up with two plus x, what's inside the parentheses. Now that we have our common denominator, we can add the numerators. So I'll have two plus x to the one half on the bottom and on top, I have x plus x, so that's 2x plus 2. And that would be our final answer. So these first two were just some, some very basic common denominator, adding them together after you get a common denominator. But we're also going to have sometimes complex fractions that have square roots in them. So our next example is going to have a complex fraction along with the square roots in the problem. So let's go on to our third one. Move that up a bit. <clears throat> square root of 1 minus m squared plus 
m squared divided by the square root of 1 minus m squared all over 1 minus m squared. All right, so with this one, okay, the first thing that I notice, I'm going to put a 1 under here and a 1 under here. I'm even going to put parentheses around here and put an exponent of 1 just so I remember if I group it together, it'll have a 1 exponent. And I'll show you why that comes into play here in a few minutes. So I notice I have a complex fraction. So this means I still find my least common denominator which uh, in this case will be the square root of 1 minus m squared. And if you want, you can write a note that that's the same as 1 minus m squared to the 1 half. These are the same common denominator. So because we have a complex fraction, we're not going to get common denominators and add. We're going to take this common denominator and multiply it to each term to get rid of denominators within the numerator and any denominators within the denominator. So I'm going to multiply each term by the square root of 1 minus m squared. And the reason I did this form as well is because if I look in my denominator, when I multiply, it'll be easier for me, to, whoops, that should be a 1. It'll be easier for me to multiply it in exponential form because that way I can combine my exponents easier than if it was in a square root form. So um, on top, because they were in radical form, I multiplied by the radical form version. On the bottom, it was in exponential, so I multiplied by the equivalent exponential form. If it's too confusing to work with two forms, like I said earlier, you can um, convert these to exponential and only use this one. Um, it's kind of up to you and your comfort level with this material. So on top, I have one minus, the square root of 1 minus m squared times the square root of 1 minus m squared. That will give me just 1 minus m squared because the square roots will cancel each other out. On the second one, the denominator cancels out completely, leaving me with just m squared. And then on the bottom, if I add the exponents together, I'll end up with 1 minus m squared to the 3 halves. Because over here, if you think about what's 1 plus 1 half, you'd put 1 over 1. That would give me 2 over 2 plus 1 over 2 when I get a common denominator, which is 3 over 2. Okay, so this is the, the math I did in my head to get 3 halves. So now we need to simplify on top. So on top, I'm actually left with just 1 because the m squareds add up to 0. And on the bottom, I have 1 minus m squared to the 3 halves and that would be our final answer. We're not going to worry about rationalizing. So if last year you guys had to rationalize, meaning no fractional exponents and no square roots in the denominator, um, you don't need to worry about that right now. So we can leave our answers with fractional exponents in the denominator. OK, so that's how we're going to do the complex ones. Same method, the only thing that might look different is our least common denominator in the format. So again, if you are okay with working with equivalent formats, then you, you don't need to get them all to one. If this gets too confusing, turn everything into exponential and go with it that way. Um, I tend to change things to exponential if I'm gonna move it, change anything, just because we have a lot more properties with exponents than we do with square roots. Okay, so the next one I wanted to go over, this one I think it's either one of them from the assignment or it's really close to the assignment. I forget which one, um, if I, which one I picked. So this one has t squared minus 6 to the third power times t squared minus 3 times 4t 
minus t squared minus 3 squared times t squared minus 6 squared times 6t all over t squared minus 6 to the 6th power. <clears throat> so let me move that up so you guys can actually see it. Okay, so this is a very long expression on top but it's just a binomial on top. I have two terms. I have this product of terms as my first and this product over here is my second. I only have one fraction, which means I don't need a common denominator. What I'm really gonna be looking to do is just to simplify this fraction. Um, so, first thing I'm gonna look for is a greatest common factor. Is there anything that's in this term that's also in this term that we can factor out. So when I look at these two terms, this has a t squared minus six to the third. This one has a t squared minus six to the second. Okay, so I notice that I do have like a common factor here and I'm gonna take the smaller exponent because I can't take three out three t squared minus sixes from this term because there's only two to take out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take out a t squared minus six squared. So now this one is no longer gonna be there and this one will only have one left. Looking I'm going to continue looking and I notice that I have a t squared minus 3. Now there's an invisible one there. And here I have another t squared minus 3. This one's squared. So again, I'm going to take the smaller exponent and I'm going to factor that one out. So when I take out a t squared minus 3, that one goes away and I'm left with 1 in that second term. Now lastly, I'm gonna look at my 4t and my 6t. Those can have a GCF as well. So if I take out from the numbers, those can both divide by two, and they both have a t. So I can take out a 2t as well. So after all of that is taken out, so this is everything that's been in common between the two terms on top. So when I look at what's left, so in here, what did not get crossed off? Well, I still had a two, and I have one of these t squared minus sixes. Over here, I had a three, See, that went away, and I had a t squared minus 3. And my denominator, I haven't done a single thing with, so I'm just going to copy it down like it was. So again, all we've done is take out the greatest common factor between the two terms on top. So now that I have multiplication, 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 all of this here is being multiplied, I notice that I actually have something that can cancel my denominator. So I can cancel t squared minus 6 squared with two of them in the bottom. So what I'm going to do now is copy what I have left. So I have t squared minus 3. I have 2t, I'm going to move the 2t in front here, and inside the parentheses I'll have, I'm going to distribute the 2, so I'll have 2t squared minus 12, and I'm going to distribute the negative 3, so negative 3t squared plus 9, all over t squared minus 6 to the 4th. So I'm just going to finish doing some combining like terms in here. So 2t and t squared minus 3. And inside I end up with negative t squared minus 3. 
over t squared minus six to the fourth. Nothing else cancels, so that would be my final answer. So you are gonna have a couple on the 1-8 assignment that are gonna look like this one where they have just these really long expressions, but you're gonna have a GCF that you can take out. So look for that so you can look to see what can I factor out which might cancel with my denominator, okay? So that's where I wanted to stop for right now. Um, and if you have any questions or if you want us to go through another problem, let me know. Um, I can try, I can do another one of these in class if you want another one. Um, just let me know.